Hello, this is Father Simeon, and welcome to our second episode of Chinese Wisdom for Life in Christ. In our first episode, we talked about our approach. How do we approach Chinese wisdom the way ancient Christians approached the philosophy and the mythology that they inherited from Greek culture? Today, I want to look at the Tao Te Ching. What does Lao Tzu tell us about the Tao that we can take as Christians? And when we see it in the light of Christ, that we can benefit from it and perhaps use that as a starting point for speaking to others about ancient Christianity as we live it today in the 21st century. When we open up the Tao Te Ching, we see first that the Tao is mystery. And as Christians, we begin with God as mystery, far beyond human comprehension. In ancient times, some sages experienced some degree of the Tao, a seed of the Tao, whatever name was given. But we can't underestimate one of the most important events in our shared human history, and that is when the Tao, without ceasing to fill and move heaven and earth, made a human body for himself in the womb of a virgin, and was born as one of us to be our master and our teacher on earth. When we look back at whatever is said about the Tao, we must see it through the light of the star of Bethlehem that guided the pagan astrologers as they journeyed to meet the born child who is the uncreated God. A great revelation of the mystery is that the uncreated one, God, is not a sea of impersonal godness, a sea of impersonal divine essence in the universe, or some impersonal force, but a person. In other words, God is not that which is, but he who is. God says, I am. And since God is personal, there is nothing higher than person in the universe or outside of it. So who is this mystery specifically. We can only know about God, what God has revealed to us. So we begin with God as the Father, the Father who created heaven and earth with all the diversity of creatures. In his uncreated beginningless essence, the Father is completely beyond the experience of us creatures. We cannot touch God or know God in his essence. We call the Father unbegotten. His Son, the Tao, is eternally begotten of the Father. The Son shares the same uncreated essence as the Father, and the Holy Spirit, who eternally proceeds from the Father, shares the same uncreated essence as the Father and the Son. These three persons, although the term person can't really be understood in any human way, are one. And the persons cannot be merged together, and their unity cannot be separated. The divine essence is entirely contained within the three persons, the one God, the Holy Trinity. How is one three and three one? It is a mystery beyond human comprehension. Some ancient sages perceived the presence and action of God from the time of our first ancestors until the incarnation of the Tao as a human being, but they did not know who he was. The thousands of years ago, the Son and Tao spoke to the ancient prophet Moses. A divine fire blazed from a bush in the desert, but the bush was not consumed by the fire. And a voice said to Moses, take off your shoes because you are standing on holy ground. Moses asked the one speaking to him, who are you? And he said, I am the existing one. Or I am who I am. Our master Jesus Christ spoke to a crowd about their common ancestor, Abraham who had lived nearly 2,000 years before that time. Christ said to the people, Your ancestor Abraham saw my day and was joyful. 
But someone mocked him and said, you're not even 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? And Christ replied, before Abraham was, I am. This is who God is. He is the mystery. Who we cannot know in his inner essence, but who has made himself known by his presence and action in his creation. You see, to say that God is mystery isn't an excuse for inventing God as you rationally think God is or you imagine him to be. A misunderstanding in our Western society is that if we want to know God or know God more or become more spiritual, then we need to read more or we need to watch more spiritually themed videos or we need to think about more spiritual or theological ideas. But no matter how much rational information that you fill your mind with about God, all that your mind is filled with are ideas and concepts about God. But God is not a concept. God is not an idea in your mind. So rational thought is no substitute for the experience of God in the heart. Even knowing correct things about God isn't the same as knowing God himself by experience. If I read a bunch of facts and descriptions and I saw thousands of photos all telling me about my wife, that wouldn't be the same thing as knowing my wife as I do through our experience together in marriage. Remember that since we experience the condition of death in the soul and body, we can't reason correctly by itself as we should. Rational thought alone, rational discussions, rational arguments do not lead you to the experience of spiritual truth. Because God is mystery, we often speak about God in orthodoxy by sometimes saying more about who God is not than who he is. If I say God does not exist, that means that God is so far beyond our notion of existence as we could possibly think or imagine it with our limited human abilities that we can't even say that God exists. God is far beyond any concept of existence that we have. Our reason guided by our inner spiritual life, the inner life of the heart, our spiritual intellect, on that authentic way of Christ can help keep us on the right path. But our rationality is not the path. And our rational thought certainly is not the destination. And by the way, just as your rational thinking can only lead you to ideas about God and not to God himself, your imagination can't do that either. Whatever you imagine God to be, God is far greater than that, far greater than your limited abilities to imagine. The same is true of heaven. Whatever you imagine heaven to be, it is not that. Many people tend to overestimate their rational abilities, and they become blinded and deluded by their own pride because the mind is disconnected from the heart and from the spiritual life. And some people fall into spiritual delusion because they confuse what they feel or what they imagine about God and spirituality. They confuse that with the reality of who God is and what an authentic spiritual life is. Remember, we only know who God is and other spiritual truth by uniting ourselves by experience to the one who is truth. This is why the original biblical church is so important. The Orthodox Church is called the pillar and ground of truth. And the way of Christ is the way of the church, the communion wherein we have access to that bottomless well of grace. And we remain grounded in reality so that we see God as he really is. We understand him to be who he really is. And we understand ourselves as we really are and the world around us with our fellow human beings and all of the creation as it really is. We can't know God in his essence, but we can know God by experience. We can't stand on the earth and reach up and touch the sun, but we do experience the sun through its rays that give us light and warmth. The way of Christ, the orthodox way, that is the way handed down from the apostles, is the path of truly knowing the God who really exists. This is so important because we have been made in his image, 
And we have been called to be in his likeness, to be like Christ, to be like the Tao, inasmuch as a creature can be like the Creator by experiencing his divine grace, which is also called the uncreated energy, that presence that is working within us, God himself working within us. If you don't know who God really is specifically, since you're in his image, then how are you supposed to know what it means to be in his image and to be in his likeness? How are you even to begin to take those steps toward fulfilling your potential and purpose in this life? I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Join us again for Chinese Wisdom for Life in Christ.